good morning children this is module 2 which deals with some basic concepts of macroeconomics which is an integral part of the topic national income and its related aggregates this particular chapter chapter 2 deals with the classification of goods into final goods and intermediate goods and consumer goods and capital goods so first of all what are final goods final goods are those goods which have crossed the boundary line of production and secondly they are ready for use by the final users now the thing there are two things to be noted what is meant by cross the boundary line of production and who are the final users now when we talk about the final users the final users are the consumers and the producers now when the consumers buy the final product the incur an expenditure which is known as consumption expenditure and when the producers buy the final product the expenditure made by them is known as the investment expenditure now talking about having crossed the boundary line of production now this concept is actually used to differentiate between the intermediate goods and final goods it's nothing it's just an imaginary line around the production center which shows actually the nature of goods and services which are produced in that sector the goods which remain within the production boundary are intermediate goods and when the goods cross the production boundary they become final goods now for example a farmer produces wheat and sells sells it to the mill owner say worth rupees 1000 the mill owner produces wheat flour and sells it to the baker worth 1500 baker produces bread and sells it to the consumer worth 2000 so now we say the final good is the bread which is available with the consumer for rupees 2000 it has crossed the boundary line of production and it does not require any value addition so when we say cross the boundary line means no value is to be added to that good and it is finally available for consumption either to the consumer or to the producer so an example of a final good is bread scooter a tv set a car so now coming over to what are intermediate goods so just the reverse of that intermediate goods are those goods which have not crossed the boundary line of production not crossed the boundary line of production means value is yet to be added they are not ready for use by the final users and when we talk about intermediate products an example of intermediate products is raw materials the goods purchased for resale now when we talk about raw materials they can be further processed during the year now for example we talk about sugar sugar is an intermediate product when it is when it is used for making sweets but sugar when used by the households for tea and coffee it becomes a final product now in order to make a classification between intermediate and final product it all depends upon the in end use of the product the end use of the product is a deciding factor in order to classify it as intermediate or final good 
Now a final distinction between intermediate goods and final goods. As already discussed, intermediate goods, they remain within the boundary line of production and value is yet to be added. Unlike the final goods, which are outside the boundary line and values not to be added to these goods, they are finally available for consumption either to the producer or to the consumer. And hence, the expenditure on these goods is called final expenditure, which is equal to C plus I. Now, what does C stand for? C means consumption expenditure and I means investment expenditure, the expenditure that is made by the producers. Whereas the expenditure on the intermediate goods is known as intermediate consumption. This is a very, very important word. Why? Because when we're talking about national income, we'll be making use of this word intermediate consumption very often. And last but not the least, the most important factor. And the most important difference is that intermediate goods are not included in the estimation of national income but in the com compilation or computation of national income, we include only the final goods and services. Why? Because the final goods, they already include the intermediate goods. Because if we're including the intermediate goods and the final goods, it leads to double, double counting, which is nothing but the overestimation of your national income. The next classification is consumer goods versus capital goods. When we talk about consumer goods, they satisfy the wants of consumers directly. They are finally purchased by the consumers for the satisfaction of the wants. Now, example, bed, scooter, TV, etc. Consumer goods can be classified into three categories, durable, semi-durable and perishable. An example of durable goods is, which can be used in consumption for a long period of time. Now, for example, your refrigerators and television sets. Semi-durable goods are those goods which can be used only for a limited period of time. Now, for example, furniture and crockery and perishable goods are those goods which get destroyed very quickly, which are useful only for a single, which can be used up only for a single act of consumption. Now, coming over to capital goods. Now, capital goods are those final goods and we talk about those fixed assets such as plants and machinery, which help in the production of goods and services. They add to the stock of capital goods, that is, they help in capital formation. But then, what is the difference between capital goods and producer goods? Now, producer goods are also used in the production of other goods, but the example of producer goods is raw material. A producer good can be raw material, which does not, which cannot be used again and again, but it can also be a fixed asset like plant and machinery, which can be used for a number of years. But then an important point to be noted is, all capital goods are producer goods, but all producer goods are not capital goods. Now coming to the first part, all capital goods are producer goods. Now when we talk about capital goods, capital goods refers to fixed assets like plant and machinery. They assist a producer in producing other goods or in producing the final goods. But when we talk about a producer good, a producer good consists of raw material, which may not be a capital good because capital good is basically fixed asset, which helps the producer in producing the final goods. Now a difference between consumption and capital goods. Consumption goods lead to direct satisfaction of human wants especially for the consumer. They are consumed by the households when purchased. Capital goods, they do not lead to direct satisfaction of human wants, but they're used by the producer for further production. And the expenditure on consumption goods is known as consumption expenditure, and the expenditure on capital goods is called investment expenditure. This slide deals with the concept and components of investment. Investment is equal to delta K, where I stands for investment, K is capital stock, and Delta K means the change in the stock of capital during a particular year, which is nothing but the closing stock minus the opening stock. And another name for Delta K is capital formation. Now, when we talk about investment, investment is split up into fixed investment and inventory investment. Now, what is fixed investment? Fixed investment is the investment made on fixed assets such as plant and machinery. And inventory investment means the stock of goods that lie unsold in the go-downs. 
Now, it is not necessary that the entire sales would take place at one go. It so happens that there are certain finished and semi-finished goods or raw material which lie unsold that refers to the inventory investment, which is again closing stock minus your opening stock. Now, investment is again split up into gross investment and net investment. Now, gross investment is nothing which is inclusive of depreciation. And when we subtract depreciation from gross, what do we get? We get net investment. And then what exactly is depreciation? Depreciation is the decline or the loss of value of fixed assets in use. Now, any plant or machinery or any fixed asset is liable to depreciate in value over a particular year. So when we leave aside certain sums of money, which is known as the depreciation cost, and we subtract that from gross investment, what we are ultimately left with is net investment. Now we come to the last concept of macroeconomics, that is the difference between stocks and flows. Now stock variables are those whose quantity is measured at a particular point of time. They are not time dimensional. Now for example, when we say that uh, as on January 1st, 2019, your bank balance was rupees 15,000. Or we say as on January 10th, 2019, the bank balance increased to 15,000. So what is it? They are all stock variables and stock impacts the flow. Now, when we give an example of stock variable, we talk about wealth, we talk about water in the overhead tanks. Now, water in the overhead tanks impacts the flow how? Because if there's water, the greater the water in the overhead tank, greater would be the flow of water in our taps. Now coming to the flow variable. Now flow variables are those where the quantity is measured over a specified period of time. They are time dimensional, meaning they can be measured per hour, per month or per year. And just as stock impacts the flow, hence we say flow impacts the stock. Now an example of a flow variable is that when you earn say 1500 or 1000 as a pocket allowance and out of that you may be just spending rupees 50 in the canteen so what do we say that that is a flow variable the rate of interest that you get on your deposits they are all examples of flow variables the water that flows in the taps is an example of flow variable. now the difference between the two when we talk about a stock variable, it is the quantity of an economic variable which is measured at a point of time. So this word at a point of time is very important. Now, when we compare it with the flow, it is nothing. The quantity of an economic variable over a period of time, over an hour, over a month, over a day. Stock has no time dimension. It is measured at a point of time, whereas a flow has time dimension. Now, stock is static and flow is dynamic. And when we talk about examples of stock, we say wealth, water in a tank, bank deposits, they are all stock concepts. But flow, when we talk about income, investment, the water coming in the taps, they are all example of flow variables. Now children, this is an assignment for you. Now following is a list of items. You just classify them into as stock and flow and also assign a reason for it. Now, for example, national income. The first example is national income. Classify it as a stock or a flow and say whether it is time dimensional or whether it is measured at a point of time or whether it is measured over a period of time. You can work it out for the remaining items as well. Thank you.